everyone this video is going to recap germany unit four which is when hitler consolidates or solidifies his power over germany so that is your title for today so you're going to need to do the date and title and then your starter is to describe the 1932 election in four sentences so in this, you're going to be having things about Hitler being the biggest party in the Reichstag, about how he wasn't allowed to be chancellor, something about von Papen, von Schleicher, and then eventually uh, von Papen and Hindenburg's agreement. So just four sentences if this is, um, actually this can just go in your books, I think for now. Yep, just pop this in your books. So last lesson, we looked at um, various things that Hitler has done to control Germany. So if we take it back to when we looked at Unit 3, there are still four main barriers to Hitler's total control. So to set the scene, at this point in, uh, in history, in our chronology, Hitler has just become Chancellor. And these are the four barriers that remain to him. So the communists are his next closest rival politically. But there are also other political parties, and in Germany there's quite a lot of them. So there's lots of choice for people, and that could potentially limit Hitler's control because, you know, other people might start appealing more, Hitler might start losing votes and other parties might start gaining them. So it's a massive barrier to Hitler's complete control over Germany. You've also got the internal power struggles that are happening within the Nazi party, particularly Rome, who is leader of the SA. He is rumoured to want to challenge Hitler for the top spot. But of course, the major one uh, was Hindenburg remaining president. But obviously, he dies uh, a few months after Hitler becomes chancellor, and that's when Hitler becomes the Fuhrer. So we're kind of ignoring that last point today, but this lesson is going to focus on how Hitler solves the issue of the other three problems. So you're going to want to pause the video, do yourself a subheading, and get down those four points. So we have learned about three major events in Hitler's consolidation of power. And the first one being the Reichstag fire, when the German parliament building was set on fire and that communist is blamed and Hitler uses it to ban the communist party. You've also got the Enabling Act, which gave Hitler complete control for four years. He could pass whatever laws he wanted. If he wanted a law where you can only eat cupcakes on a Wednesday, then he could have made that law. No one could have stopped him. And the final way he overcame his barriers to complete control is the Night of the Long Knives, where 400 of his closest political opponents were murdered. So your task today is to create fact files for these three events and I'm asking you to focus on three things and this is really going to develop not only your basic knowledge but also your ability to analyse and evaluate long term the effect that these events had on Hitler's control of Germany. So I would suggest, and personally how I would lay it out is I would have subheadings, you know I'm a fan of a subheading, for Reichstag Fire Enabling Act and Night of the Long Knives. And then I would just have kind of three sections for each of those. And what happened, what are the consequences, and how does it help Hitler gain control? Now to help you at the bottom, there is a link to BBC Bite Size that I'll also post in the description in the chat box, uh, in the YouTube video for you. But that's probably only going to be really useful for what happens and what are the consequences. Uh, for the final one, how did it help Hitler gain more control? You're going to have to 
analyse that yourself and work out what that means for Hitler's position in Germany and as head of the Nazi party. So this is probably going to take you about 20 minutes. So pause the video and you can lay this out however you would like. Okay, we're going to do a practice exam question now. Uh, so, in the description uh, in, on the YouTube video, I will post this link to another one of our YouTube videos, uh, which talks you through how to answer a Germany question one. So you don't need to watch the whole thing because it goes through various practice questions, but I'd just like you to uh, go through the first five minutes of the introduction and the first... Uh, time where they go through the question with you all together. Okay. So this is the question I am giving you. Which of these sources is more useful to a historian studying the reasons for the Night of the Long Knives? So already you might be having some ideas in your head about why the Night of the Long Knives happened. You might have something about Hitler gaining control, um, about Rome being rumoured to want to overthrow Hitler, all of that stuff. I put the structure for you in the top right hand corner uh, in a little box. So you need to discuss the strengths and limitations of both sources. You cannot just do one. You must analyse both and how useful they are to a historian. And then you must come to a judgment. You must say which source is more useful to a historian. You cannot say they're both equally useful. We, like, they wouldn't give you an unuseful source. That would be pointless. And also at the bottom, I've got some hints about how we look at authorship. Because within this question, you're going to be looking at content. So you know, is it accurate? Does it match what you know? But also authorship. Are they reliable? Do you trust what they're saying? So I've given you the four points that we use for our criteria when we talk about authorship as historians. We have to look at what is it saying? Who is saying it? Why are they saying it? And based on your own knowledge, does this source make sense? Okay. So you've got source H then. From Hitler's speech to the Reichstag on the 13th of July 1934, justifying his actions concerning the SA. In the circumstances, I had to make but one decision. If disaster was to be prevented at all, action had to be taken with lightning speed. Only a ruthless and bloody intervention might still perhaps stifle the spread of revolt. If anyone reproaches me and asks why I did not resort to the regular courts of justice for conviction of the offenders, then all I can say is, in this hour, I was responsible for the fate of the German people, and therefore I became the supreme judge of the German people. You have to work out what that source is saying about why the Night of the Long Knives happens. I'll give you a hint. Um, you, If you read the third sentence, that will help you out. Um, in terms of authorship, I just draw your attention to the fact that it is Hitler speaking. The fact that he is speaking to the Reichstag, who is, they are his party. At this point, there are no other parties. And the fact that he is justifying his actions. You might want to think about those. For Source I, it's a cartoon by David Lowe, which appeared in the London Evening Standard on the 3rd of July 1934. The caption reads, they salute with both hands now. And Goering is standing to Hitler's right, dressed as a Viking hero, and Goebbels is on his knees behind Hitler. The paper at the feet of the SA has the words, Hitler's unkept promises. And the swastika on Hitler's armband is between the words the double cross. So again, there's lots of imagery here. Um, and don't just dismiss it as useless immediately because it's a cartoon and it's British. So you can acknowledge the fact that, yeah, they're British, they probably weren't there. But 
it's a well-known fact that this happened. So again, look at the imagery. Look how Hitler is meant to be portrayed. Uh, look at the image, the figures next to him. Uh, look at the feet behind him. Like, what is that all saying about why the Night of the Long Knives happened? Okay. Uh, so you're going to go ahead and have a go at this now. It is an 11 marker, so it's probably going to take you about 11 to 12 minutes. You've got the structure on the top right hand for you. So pause the video and have a go at that now. Okay, so don't forget to email that work to your teacher. And then, of course, you've got your Show My Homework quiz three times. Bye.